Hey everyone, welcome back. What I have in front of me here are servo motors, and um, they're surprisingly easy to make work with your Arduino. Just want to talk to you real quick about servo motors. Um, you get them in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They're usually uh, either classified by their weight, like this here is a 5 gram, this is a 9 gram servo. They're also classified by their uh, the fact that they have metal or n or plastic gears. So this one here would be a nine gram uh, metal gear servo, and they'll be classified by their torque. So these are MG nine nine six Rs, and this one here is a uh, Traxxas. Uh, these guys here are you know made in made in China. You can find them all over the place. In fact, I'll have a link to. A lot of different kinds in the description. Um, another important thing to note when you're getting these is their voltage range. So they always come with these three pin plugs and the pinout typically is ground, power and signal. The ground is usually the darker one so in this case it's brown and in this case it's black. There's two standards of color. It's this kind of brown, red and orange and this uh, black, red and white. So typically it'll go uh, ground uh, on the outside, power in the middle, and signal on the other side. And that's just so if you plug it in backwards, you're just grounding the signal so you're not causing any damage. You're not like reverse, reversing the polarity on those. Now, I would not recommend running any of these off the 5 volts on your Arduino. The signal is fine to share the signal and the ground but the power should be broken out to something a little bit more powerful, either straight from like a five volt plug pack or a battery or something like that. Another thing to note is that servos will typically come with a bag of accessories. And these accessories are usually four servo horns. The horns are what fit onto this uh, splined connection up top here. Uh, and then uh, screws in with a screw usually included as well um, sometimes they'll come with mounting hardware like um, self-tapping screws um, or anti-vibration bushings all sorts of things like that but at the very least the servo should come with horns and these horns are to adapt the servo to different situations now how the servo works is uh, typically you'll send a coded signal through either the orange or the white wire and the servo will rotate to a known position usually in a sweep of 90 degrees. So if I go all the way to one end here, oh, this one, it says wrecked probably because it goes more than 90 degrees. Let's try this little one. Okay, so it's all the way at one end and you can see it's a little bit offset here, a little bit north uh, of the horizontal line and it finishes a bit south of the horizontal line so just about 180 degrees um, and yeah that's pretty much the deal but they do need a pulse um, with a specific timing all this is available online but I'm here to tell you it doesn't even have to be that complicated because your Arduino has a built-in library to deal with it to demonstrate how simple it is to use uh, servos, I came up with this very simple program, uh, which I did on the coding array sent to me by another maker, uh, link in the uh, description. Um, simply because uh, this is very simple, there's an analog uh, potentiometer, which could be one of these slide pots or it could be like one of the turn pots or one with a screwdriver, it doesn't matter. It All it does is it is it chops the the 5 volt signal into something in between so it'll slide between 5 volts and 0 volts and everywhere in between and there is a servo already included you'll notice that this servo is actually uh, attached to the board but the board is getting its 5 volts directly from the USB here it is not taking it from the 5 volt regulator here which is on the Arduino itself so Super simple, uh, two pins needed, one to read the analog pot and the other one to um, control the position of the servo, send that pulse I was talking about. And I went an extra mile and added this, uh, the LCD into it, this uh, I2C uh, implemented LCD. And even with the LCD, it's still very few lines of code. I think it's something like 12 lines of code. It's really not that bad. 
So all it does is it reads the potentiometer and based on where the potentiometer is, it'll move the servo. And what's great is you can see the 90 degree sweep here and when I'm all the way at one end, the servo is all the way at 180 degrees. All the way at the other end, the servo is at zero degrees. And I can even put it in between, about there, 90 degrees. So super simple. I mean, if I can do it, I basically just stole a whole bunch of, um, uh, of code and mashed it together. Uh, plus I added the LCD. I'll show you how I did that. But yeah, this should be able to get you going. Testing out a slightly new format to explain my code. So if you like it, let me know in the description. If you hate it, do the same. Um, so first and foremost, uh, this is based on an example by uh, Mikhail uh, Renot. And then it was modified by Scott Fitzgerald. And then clearly it was bastardized by Simple Electronics, my YouTube channel on October 4th, 2021. So the first thing is our three includes. So we need to include wire.h and liquid crystal i squared c.h, both of which you can ignore because both of these is for the i squared c functionality and the LCD. So if you don't need those, don't worry about them. Just include the servo.h. Next, we have to set the specifics of our LCD. So again, you can ignore this if you're only dealing with servos. Uh, so liquid crystal underscore i squared c. Uh, name it something, named it an LCD in this case. Um, there's the I squared C address, the amount of horizontal characters, and the amount of uh, lines. So 16.2. Then you declare, you put a name to your servo. You do need this if you're doing the servo work. So called it my servo, that's part of the example, but you can call it whatever you want. And in fact, if you have more than one servo, you can just declare them here, not a problem. Then an integer pot pin equals eight. I selected eight because on the coding array, the analog um, slider is on pin eight. And we need a val, uh, so int val. This is the value that the potentiometer will be uh, displaying. It'll be read to that integer. Then in the setup, uh, we have to do the name of your servo dot attach and then three, I believe three is the number of the pin we are using to drive the servo. So there's a little bit of a, a typo in the comments, but that's okay. Then we have to initialize the LCD, so lcd.init. Then lcd.backlight, turn on the backlight. Lcd uh, set cursor. Um, so we're gonna put it at position zero, zero, so the upper left-hand corner. Again, all of this LCD stuff you can skip uh, lcd.print servo angle with a space in quotes and that just puts uh, some text on the LCD to get started. So, so far for the servo stuff we have two lines, uh, one, two, three, four lines of code. Pretty simple. Next into the loop, um, our val equals the analog read of the pot pin, so that would be pin 8 in this case. So it's actually going to read uh, what the value is on the potentiometer. Then the val gets mapped. Map is when you take a variable that goes from one range to another range, you convert it to a different range. So in this case, val goes from 0 to 1023, that's an analog read. But our servo, don't forget, only does 180 degrees. And the servo library is set to take a number between 0 and 180 degrees to set the servo there in those numbers of degrees. So we're going to map it to 180 and 0. So a pod value of 0 will give us a uh, 180 degree sweep on the servo. If the servo is going backwards to what you expected, just change the 180 and the 0 places and it'll go the other direction. Then again, some LCD stuff we're doing. I'm going to set the cursor right after the text that we've already written to the LCD. Um, and then we're going to print blank three spaces. This is just to erase old data. You can do it on the LCD where you just clear the whole LCD. But I didn't want to rewrite servo angle all the time. I just wanted to rewrite the numbers. And I do that because if you have like 180 degrees on the potentiometer display, and then you move to, let's say, 90 degrees, it'll go 
uh, 90, but it won't rewrite that last character, so it looks like you have 900 degrees. So we're not Tony Hawk, we're not going 900 degrees, we're only going uh, 90. So what I did is just have this kludged in to erase the value all the time. Then we set the cursor just at the end of our text again, 13, 0. Then we have the LCD print the value that we're going to put our potentiometer in, the d amount of degrees we're going to put our potentiometer in. Then my servo dot write, that'll actually set the potentiometer to that amount of degrees. Then the author of the example set a 15 millisecond delay, uh, which they say it's so the servo can actually catch up but I also like it because it gives time for numbers to stabilize before it takes another reading of the potentiometer in this case. And that's it. That is it. That's the only thing you need to do to make a servo work. In fact, this is way more stuff than you need to do to make a servo work. And so that's it. That's all the code you need. And in fact, you know, I more than doubled the code because I added the display in there just for video making purposes. Isn't that neat? So if you're having trouble uh, thinking of applications for using a servo, let me know in the description. Maybe I'll make another video with a more practical application, or maybe I'll show you different ways you can modify the code to do specific tasks. Either way, let me know also if you like these more basic videos where I show you the potential and what you could do and hopefully that inspires you to make your own projects. Oh, and if you want one of these coding arrays, I don't think you can find them. If I found one, um, I'll put a link in the description. Thanks for watching.